Uh, thank you, Mr. Mishra, for the invitation and uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Khalil here from Esotica, Malaysia. And today I'd like to share about our journey into uh, the journey for large language model for my country, Malaysia, uh, for the Malay language. Right. Okay. All right. So this is the topic that I've given and hopefully within the next half an hour uh, I would like to bring you throughout the past one year of our journey into getting to where we are today uh, which is the Malaysian uh, large language model so as a background uh, we have myself and my CTO the, the genius behind uh, our work in our startup uh, Hussein and we've been at this since 2019. So back then, the goal is to train narrow AIs to understand Bahasa Melayu or the Malay language uh, using NLP. So this is one of the branch uh, of uh, AI. So over the years, uh, we've been supported by early investors from WTF and Pichin and two agencies from the government. Uh, Cradle and MTDC. These are early stage uh, agencies that support startups like us, and we are in the field of uh, deep tech, uh, artificial intelligence. And in the past year, we've been heavily supported by both uh, NVIDIA and Microsoft through their startup programs, uh, namely the Inception program from NVIDIA, uh, as well as the Founders Hub for Microsoft. So these two uh, big tech has been instrumental to get us to where we are today because uh, ever since we started in 2019 until today, we are a very small team. The co-founders is two, and only recently we hired our first employee to help with our product as well as a contract uh, uh, to, to push with, with some custom development. So today we have a team of four with a big group of volunteers helping us to get where we are today. Okay. So the origin story is back in 2018, uh, my CTO was engaged to do social media analytics or sentiment analysis for a local political party. So back then, there was no NLP for Malay language. The closest was past uh, Indonesia. So with that in mind, he started this open source project called Malaya to handle all this uh, development of R&D for sentiment analysis and all other NLP tasks uh, back then. So this is like 2018, 2019, that time period. So fast forward to today, Malaya is at its fifth version with all the state-of-the-art language models under the NLP. So Mesorotika was set up as the business entity for this open source project. So before generative AI, this is the whole slew of services that we offer to the local market with various components for API for NLPs and products that we built as well as language models that are already pre-trained for developers to continue to do on. And if you can see, there is a box called Large Language Model, LLM. So for us internally, we thought LLM will come within the next two, three years. But as all we... And the whole LLM thing fast track within, uh, I would say, mm -hmm. one year. Very, very fast. Why do you hate it, sir? So, the beginning. <laughs> so, we started the, the whole generative AI journey with our first product called Now. So, this is uh, a chatbot for business, right? To handle bilingual, I mean, both English and Bahasa Melayu or Malay language. And we launched in December 12, 2022. So, if you can imagine, this is like 10 days after ChatGPT went uh, global. So back then, you were thinking, ah, okay, another big uh, chatbot from a big tech company. Uh, okay, no, no alarms there. Uh, we, previously, we know that any chatbot that comes uh, from big tech, normally they will get that, uh, they will retract after a few, uh, few, uh, few weeks or few days. Uh, but, but for us, uh, we only found out that, okay, ChatGPT is gaining momentum worldwide, and based on Gartner's uh, survey, they say that generative AI will take over the enterprise within this year, right? And mainly tackle the customer experience, so, uh, aka the chatbots for businesses. So this is the opportunity that we're trying to grab 
for both enterprise customers as well as SME. Which means that we have to pivot our announced products to adopt uh, the LLM technologies. So with that in mind, uh, we play around with the APIs on OpenAI, and this is in autumn December, I ran this exam here. This is something that we need to uh, really uh, explore, because this is how everyone interacts with AI uh, since 2022. Okay. So of course, like everybody else, we applied for the APIs and we got access to GPT-4 APIs and started to uh, pivot the product as well as integrate and, and change everything at the back end to use LLMs. So within uh, 17 months, we got access and uh, by a few weeks, we already got our announced to be announced. So with that little demo, we got we got we got some uh, press uh, uh, online press right, from our local tech bloggers. So it created momentum for us to continue our efforts. So throughout the past one year, this is what we've come so far as far as refreshing our company with other AI chatbot companies. First is the deep support that we get from NVDII in uh, Asia Pack. So both our Malaya open source as well as announced product is listed in NVDII.com, the, the AI directive for all worldwide. So in Malaysia there's uh, maybe more than 10 and we are the first that, that tackles uh, Malay language uh, AI specifically. So we were very grateful to be listed and this is where we started to gain more momentum and recognition. And in December, October last year, we've released our own LLM called Malaysia uh, Large Language Model, or in short, MALA. So all our current LLM models are open source 100%. We have the 1 billion, 5 billion, and 7 billion. Not only the models that train, the data set, the instruction, and everything is under our hacking face uh, profile. So you can you want to check us out. You can go to admin face of post that's Mesolotica. We publish everything uh, over there. Okay. So, with all this uh, development, uh, we were very grateful to land our first EOC with the uh, uh, government ABC under the Ministry of Economy. This is uh, internally we call this Dawson, Department of Statistics Malaysia, and their policy of data is the first in the country to be open. That means they have an open data policy that allows anybody to use their data for, for various reasons. So because of this policy, it enables this particular agency to use our solution to test uh, or upgrade their existing chatbot with generative AI capabilities. Because back then, uh, our, we were using the we were still using ChatGPT's APIs, right? That means any data that goes to OpenAI is going to be uh, in process in the states, right? So we cannot run away because this model is deployed in the state. So if uh, the policy is not open, it wasn't possible for this agency because of compliance and privacy issue and of course uh, sovereignty, national sovereignty issues. So this allows these particular agencies to test our announced product with ChatGPT APIs. So after a uh, few months of development and customization for them, we were able to get our NAS product onto the official website for the agriculture census, which is running right now. Right, so that little button on the bottom right, behind that is our NAS chatbot. So experience-wise, it's like how you interact with any uh, Gen AI chatbot. Just ask questions and it will reply based on the, the knowledge base that is being on. So our offering to the market in Malaysia is we say that our bot understands mixed language. In this case, both English and Malay in the same sentence, like uh, uh, mix, uh, colloquial meaning your normal day-to-day -day conversations, as well as social. So when it comes to social, we have all these weird spellings of words and short forms that comes from social media language. So we are able to process this and uh, translate into standard Malay language. So this is where our our forte is. Apart from that, is to address compliance issues, right? privacy and security, and especially for government. Is where is your AI six? 
Is it sitting on a cloud in Singapore? Is it sitting on a cloud in, 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 in the States? Or are you able to deploy within the government network? So this is what we provide to enterprise customers. Very important. And of course, as I said, the price is all about cost savings and trying to uh, use AI to get that 10x productivity in whatever form, either it's in terms of efficiency or cost savings. Now, all this is the foundation for our future goals where AI is used to further automate business processes down the line. So, but the goal right now is to get AI into businesses for your interaction with customers or employees. So at a high level, we built the application on top of now. The LM we started off with the Azure Open AI, then we changed to our own LM. Everything is run on Azure, and trading and inferences are using the NVIDIA hardware, uh, namely uh, A hundreds. So this is a general architecture of uh, now. What we come to know about right now uh, in the field of RAG, Retrieval of Method Generation Systems. So this is how current developers that develop LLM applications uses the APIs and build the wrapper around it to either integrate into existing platforms or deploy chatbots uh, to the, the market. Right? So this is our version of the architecture. If you go online and search RAG, there will be a lot of uh, ways of doing this. Okay? And for this to be production, the things that is at the active research stage is the safety, AI safety. How do you implement AI safety into your LLM applications? So this is the, the conversations that we have between uh, the government as well as uh, Big Tech. Uh, with uh, AWS or NVIDIA. So, in a general approach for LLM developments, I like to show this uh, graph here. This is shared by OpenAI in uh, their update uh, last year. So, on the right, RAG and prompt engineering. So, exactly that is what now is. We do uh, prompt engineering and RAG for fast experimentation and deployment. Then, for big customers, they will go down to the route of uh, combining all these efforts, especially fine tuning. And in the box of fine tuning, this is where MALA comes in. I mean, we did use open source models uh, from either Lama or, or Mistro or any of the future open source models. We fine tune it with our local data sets. This is what comes out as MALA in, in various flavors, in various sizes. So when it comes to enterprise, it always comes back to how is your data policy? You need to be on prem. We have a local cloud partner that uh, allows you to operate AI systems and, and the like. Right? So, typically for SMEs, we will go down to the normal SaaS route. You subscribe to our NAUS, you, you install our chatbot on your website or applications, and that's that. But for enterprise, it, comes, it, it falls down to one or two questions. It means how big is your data that you want us to use to train your private LLM? Number two, where do you need this AI model to be deployed? Is it okay to be on the cloud and your compliance agrees? Or do you need to buy the actual NVIDIA hardware and put it into your local network? So these are the prerequisites before deploying any uh, LLM applications into big organizations or government. Okay. So uh, coming to Malam, how we did it, right? So, as I mentioned, Mala, uh, the foundation models are for the source, everything is for source, not only the models, the database, uh, the data set that we use to train, as well as all the instruction data sets that we use to make it usable for developers. Uh, this allows either you to do it on your own, or come to Mesolitica and we help you to fine tune and deploy everything end to end. So, this is, we are already going into the realm of LLM Ops. So, because we are a small startup, right? So getting, gathering the data set is number one. Is how do we do this? So, firstly, we gather the volunteers. So, these are your data scientists and data engineers. They are already working. They are interested to go into the realm of LLM. So, we gather them into our Discord server and we get them to help us to create relational websites. So, we have 
150 gigabytes of information on that specific thing, from websites, from news sites, from forums, and from government and academic websites that is publicly available. Okay. So we do post processing, and we ended up with about 349 gigabytes of office data that is already prepared, uh, is already prepared for uh, LLM training. And at the peak, we use 80, 800 GPUs on Azure that will give us about 6,400 gigabytes of URAM to start the training. And for our foundational models of 1, 5, and 7, uh, 1, 5, and 7 billion uh, Malam parameters, it took us 10 days to train all three models on this uh, AP, uh, on these clusters of uh, A100s on Azure. In terms of cost, we can share it, for these 10 days, it cost us about 17,000 US dollars in terms of Azure credits. But the most expensive part is actually to prepare the data. But once you scrape it, you have to prepare it for training. So this is the whole area of synthetic generation. So at the point of training, we were using the GPT-4 APIs in Azure that it took to 100,000 US to prepare the data and to train the models. Okay. Uh, thankfully now, uh, we have an alternative uh, from GPT-4, which is the uh, Mistral. That means uh, Mistral, uh, the Microsoft model from uh, Mistral, the MOE, Ministry of Experts. So that is good to replace with the GPT-4 API. So in a way, we can uh, ultimately have the unlimited uh, synthetic data generation. So all these technical uh, details are on our GitHub on our Amazon uh, Hugging Face uh, repository, so you can go and uh, uh, go through one by one the steps that you use, where it's all located, and probably you can use your own as well. Uh, unless you, you have to have the access to the compute necessary, in this case, the A100s, uh, for the so with, with this experience uh, uh, and the advice from uh, NVIDIA, we were asked to produce these papers uh, on archive. We publish this as the open journal. So we have four currently. Uh, first is the Malaysian Mistral paper. Then we have the Malam paper. And our latest paper is the Multi-Model Malam paper. That means now the, we have the capabilities. We have a model that understands not only text, but multi-image and multi-audio and single model. So it is where we are right now. So everything, uh, as I mentioned, so is open source. So you see, you read this paper, and all the course is provided for you to reproduce in your own local language as well. <coughs> so yesterday, uh, okay, before yesterday, we had these open chat applications that we showed to all our uh, prospects or clients or partners, saying that, okay, we already trained the LLM, how do we create a product out of it. So of course, the most obvious answer is an open chat that's like ChatGPT. And this is an open chat that we released to public yesterday, where you can try it out yourself at certica.com, it's an open chat. And you can, you can choose from the various models that we release. So at the moment, we are releasing maybe three or four open models uh, to test uh, our local capabilities. And uh, this is the precursor to any um, app developments uh, in the future. On the same app, uh, hopefully within the next few months, we will start to also uh, have options for our proprietary model. This is the, the commercial model that we are going to market uh, for our company. So all this brings us to today, where at the moment the service now is focusing on two areas. One is the conversational AI application, which is now. This is the, 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 the immediate application that we sell to either SMEs or companies that are okay with their compliance in terms of AI uh, data privacy, or uh, enterprise that wants to use our Mala model and the whole LLM box pipeline uh, to deploy uh, within the organization. So these are the key focus at the moment for us uh, uh, in Malaysia. And this brings us to our uh, entry into uh, AWS. So because we have the, the models already, uh, AWS Malaysia, uh, we are working with them closely to get this model ready for business into the AWS uh, Sage Nuclear Jumpstart program. Which means that existing AWS customers in Malaysia that wants to use our models 
is just like how you get the API from the AI or Entropic or Gemini. Uh, if you have key, and you develop within the AWS ecosystem and, uh, and, and with all the AWS tools around generative AI development. So this is a big step for us, working closely with the Malaysian team, uh, both Malaysia and Singapore of AWS, to get this model ready for enterprise customers. So, with all the technical hurdles uh, of come and understanding uh, of having the experience to develop an end-to-end -end LLM, this brings us to the next big question that people, uh, especially government, ask us is, okay, where do we get the talent to actually use the APIs or, or fine-tune LLMs? So this is where, in Mesolitica, what we're trying to do is to create uh, the next pool of talent that understands the use of LLM to APIs or to fine-tune all these open source models available for private entities. So for me, my go-to uh, advice to anybody that comes to me to, to start this journey is actually for to go through the courses from Deep Learning. If you haven't uh, know about this website, Deep Learning.ai, they already published a lot of short courses uh, on Gen AI and LLM. And for foundational, is for Gen AI for everyone. It's very good for non-technical person to understand the state of AI uh, in the, the current year, the, the whole thing about what is the difference between previous AIs and LLMs and generative AI? This is the cost for you. For those that are uh, front-end developers or back-end or full-stack developers that want to go into uh, LLM development, this one is, is very nice uh, from a generating cost. As a gen AI, for me, I call it Gen AI developers. And the one that really wants to, to deploy LLM applications, LLM ops is the way to go. This is the new subfield within this field to get you up and running. So this we call Gen AI engineers. And within our volunteer group, this is the, the fundamental uh, package that they have to understand. So this is the transformer library from the base. So this is the prerequisite for all our volunteers in our Discord server. So if you're not able to understand this, you won't be able to follow uh, all the classes or, or sessions that my CTO does in the Discord server. So this is where uh, we push the R&D on our side. Every time there's a new uh, open source model or announcement from Big Tech from the state side, uh, this group of people is the one that will train the next open source model. So for example, over last weekend, uh, when uh, Google brought Gemini uh, 1.5 uh, and, and 1 Pro together with the open source Gemma, uh, they did the organization Gemma over the weekend. So this process is an iterative process, right? It's a race with everybody coming up and, and a state of the art models. And of course, doing benchmark and the like uh, to address it, uh, all the LLM limitations and, and uh, 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 market demand, so to speak, right? So that's all from me. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention and hopefully I can, and hopefully I can answer all, all of your questions. Thank you.